This is, you know, I'm sorry to say that there's not a lot for the update. There's a lot of uh, conjecture and, and speculation and curiosity and, and good thought. Uh, like, like, for instance, Hugo Salinas Price, who has some interesting contacts with the Kremlin regarding uh, silver-backed Mexican peso, prices from Mexico. Uh, he was invited to the Kremlin, and th there's a lot of discussions, and I, I think the Kremlin wanted to know a little bit more about, you know, uh, backing the ruble with gold and silver. Uh, because the Russians are loaded with, with metals. Uh, but Price has a theory, and I asked him about it. He's a subscriber. He's not only a subscriber, but he gave two <laughs> gift subscriptions to friends of his, one a banker in Mexico, another an economist in Mexico, and they continue. And I, I appreciate Price. He's, uh, he apologizes. He said, I'm, I'm no longer a younger man. I can't get around as much. He, he could not, for instance, make it to the St. Petersburg uh, economic conference, I think about a year and a half ago or two years ago, something like that, <clears throat> he had a scheduled talk. No, a year ago, a year ago, September of 17, September of 16. Uh, but Price has a theory, uh, and that is that the Chinese are not going to dishoard, gorge out, uh, hand out or distribute their own Chinese gold. Uh, for the related oil contracts, they're going to appeal to London to ship out Western gold. Okay, if the West wants to buy, let's say, Russian oil, ooh, they're going to have to use Western gold. Hmm, that's interesting. If the Indonesians, the Indonesians are producers, and they're really not in the news much, and I'm very curious how they're going to link in to this Chinese oil, gold, yuan contract. But anyway, Price believes that the West might supply the gold for the Shanghai gold contract tied to oil. And I don't know. Um, I actually wondered when I made the message, are, are you saying this with tongue in cheek, Hugo? And he said, uh, well, it, it's an idea and uh, it, it's worth thinking about because the Chinese are not about to supply the world with gold that goes and enters the various Western systems and is corrupted and contaminated by our unbelievably diverse, controlled, rigged, corrupt financial platforms. So here's what I think is going to come, and, and relatively soon. But bear in mind, the Chinese have just announced this. They haven't rolled it out. Uh, they're going to roll it out in, in when they're ready. And if, we can, if the U.S. continues to threaten them uh, and, and to murder some of the middle-level players, and to exact more tension in North Korea, China just might say, well, you know, we'll roll this back a couple months later. But here's what I think is going to happen. I, I think we're going to have a, an evolution uh, with this primary Shanghai oil gold yuan contract. Uh, it links all three. We're going to have an evolution. And I think what's going to come soon is the gold trade note that I've been talking about for four years. The gold trade note is essentially a replacement of the U.S. Treasury bill. The buyer of whatever, whether it's a boatload of grain, like wheat or soybean, corn, uh, a boatload of oil, uh, it could be a boatload of cement, half cement, half lumber. Who knows? Who cares? But the buyer would post a, a margin equity front, and it would be in gold. And it might be like 5%, it might be 3%, I don't know. And the rest would be backed by the gold trade note, the whole gold trade vehicle, the, 
the instrument, the financial instrument that has its marginalized element for leverage up front, you know, for easy transaction purposes and creation. But I believe the gold trade note will become a staple of commerce for shipments and payments. It could be container vessels, you know, for Staples, my old company, it could be for Walmart, it could be for Target, uh, it could be for, you know, uh, any number of things, car parts, shipments, giant shipments, the payment for them. I think the gold trade note is going to become a staple and the Eastern nations are going to require it. They're the ones doing a great deal of the production. The United States and the West does a great deal of the consumption and the bond fraud factory activity. So, uh, the basis of this gold trade note, I think, will be the, Shai, the Shanghai gold oil contract. Now, they made it gold oil for a reason. It's to supplant and make irrelevant and push into the weeds the petrodollar. The most important commercial item out there involved in global trade payment is crude oil. It's very big portion. I don't know the exact proportion of global trade, but uh, if if the new vehicle for global trade payments is set up properly in crude oil for that market, the rest of global commerce will follow. That's why they chose oil. It's to supplant and remove and push into the weeds the petrodollar. This is gigantic importance. So <clears throat> we're going to have to wait for the rollout. Uh, we're going to have to wait for the details. We're going to have to wait for uh, details on gold supply. We're going to have to wait for details on linkage with the London Metal Exchange, linkage with the Hong Kong Metal Exchange. I think we're going to see a, a double-barreled Chinese effort with Shanghai and Hong Kong. It's like two Chinamen, two legs, one inside China, one sort of outside China, at least a window to the west in Hong Kong. Okay, what, what remains is a number of details and the starting point. What we're not told in the west is all the threats, all the murders, all the fraud, all the gold thefts, all the downed airplanes, all the murdered lawyers that the United States is involved in at the highest levels of our government and financial functions to prevent the Chinese from rolling this out. There's absolutely no cooperation whatsoever, just Al Capone type criminal activity. Uh, we really got to wait for this to roll out. Roll out here, Elijah. And uh, I've got a number of questions, and you know, I'm really curious about the, the gold supply. I think China would do very well to say, we'll do 50 50. We'll supply half the gold, but London, you supply half the gold. Let me remind you something that happened in London. This is extremely important. I was told well by the voice that because of rehypothecation on an illegal corrupt basis by London bankers, they used improperly Chinese gold on deposit for creating the entire Euro currency system. All the Maastricht rules were violated with the help of Goldman Sachs, and all the metal pledged from London was contaminated by, I shouldn't say contaminated, was infused by a lot of Chinese gold without their permission. The entire Euro currency has a fraudulent foundation, therefore. And the Chinese, through the White Dragon representatives and a few agents working for the uh, Interpol Fraud Division, 
and a bunch of highfalutin, no, I, no, how should I describe it? High profile lawyers, they put the London bankers' feet to the fire and extracted 1,000 tons of London gold per month for 30 months. Okay? That's what the white dragon power is all about, extracting 30,000 tons of gold from London between March of 2012 and the end of 2014. And I was told by The Voice when it ended in the last couple months of 2014. Wow. Okay. I asked the question, gosh, I didn't know London had that much gold. And he said, oh, don't worry, they were pretty much just an agent. The point is that China has the power to extract gold from London with precedent, with an example, and with a historically proved example and event. I asked the question, if London ran out of gold, because they were hitting the bottom of the barrel of the Bank of England, a lot of evidence of the type of bars for that back then, where did all the gold come from? And the boys said, well, real simple. The Vatican and Basel, the Bank for International Settlements. The point is that China has the ability, the means, the precedent, and the channels to extract more gold from London, but I believe they need an accord with the Vatican. They're not going to get much cooperation from Basel, who's got their own cockeyed concept of, of a new world order currency with the SDR special drawing rights and, oh gosh, even with a blockchain version of title submissions. Okay, real simple point regarding the IMF, Basel, the SDR, the new currency, real simple point. <clears throat> Whatever they try with this Basel, Basel means the headquarters of the Western Central Banks, okay? That's the power center of the Fed, power center of Euro Central Bank, and Bank of England, and Bank of Japan. Okay, the central problem with the IMF, Basel, and the SDR, all their concepts, is that they're going to be centralized, and they're not going to be transparent. And those are the two violations that will keep them on the sidelines out of the power game. They're going to be demoted and marginalized, and it's going to be extremely interesting to see how it plays out. Because centralized, decentralized and transparent are the two themes of the cryptocurrencies and blockchain. And, and they're going to prevail. Now, one of the topics that a lot of viewers asked about is crypt our cryptocurrencies. And I'd like to discuss a little bit about that. But first, I'd like to just get clarification on the um, oil's futures contract denominated in yuan. Do you, uh, do any of your sources confirm that it will be gold backed? Because I know there was a lot of controversy about that in the alternative or the independent media um, that it was reported all around that it'll be gold backed. But we there there was it didn't seem like there was official confirmation on that. By gold backed, you mean the oil gold contract would be gold backed? That, but it's a bit of a contradiction. The oil gold contract is a contract linking oil with gold. So if the Chinese are deceptive and it's not involving gold, then it, it's basically going to be an oil yuan contract. Right. That's what it is. That that's what it seems like. Um, official sources can confirm that it'll be oil. It'll be an oil yuan or a yuan denominated oil futures contract but not that it'll be gold backed i don't know if any of your sources can confirm that it'll be gold backed well the voice says that it's going to be gold backed but don't dismiss the possibility that the first rollout will be an oil rmb contract and then a couple months later, six months later, I don't know. I'm, I'm not part of this Chinese governance process. Um, the Voice made a comment, and it was very clear. He said it two months ago when all this started to break out in the news. He was very clear. He said, finally, 
we have the announcement of the of the Chinese oil for gold contract and at the same time expect the oil RMB contract. We now have competition for the petrodollar, which will eventually end up in the dustbin. This Chinese, he, he's talking here, this, this Chinese oil gold contract has been stress tested and is the first of several rollouts that have all been stress tested. And over the next several months, really an, an undetermined, un, un, unstated period of time, when the entire rollout is done, you're going to have the next global financial structural system laid out in full view. And it's not going to be dollar based. Okay, so this is the first of many. Whether whether the oil gold linkage is clear from Shanghai, I don't know. I would like to see a very strong oil RMB contract so that we can get to what is called the petro yuan and replace the petrodollar. Uh, the petrodollar has been the source of, of a great deal of financial fraud and global wars. I don't think the petro yuan would have those negative characteristics. This has to play out. Uh, the Chinese might decide just to do the Shanghai oil RMB contract first and have a little more delay as they work out all the you know, the cable lines and supply channels for gold. I'd like to see their gold contract come out, but be much more identified with the characteristic for global trade payments in the gold trade note. I'd like it to be called the gold trade note with the backing of the futures contract and, and other instruments. <clears throat> Expect many more rollouts, many more announcements, but this is going to take time. And, you know, just imagine that you're in a burning building. You and your family, Elijah, are in a burning building. Your wife and two kids. You've got to go out. You've got to get out. But there's a bully outside who says, if you come out, we'll shoot you. If you come out and you bring out your two little kids, we might abduct one child and hold the little girl as ransom to control you. Okay, this is what's going on with the burning building of the petrodollar. The ones inside caught are the Chinese. They want to get out. They don't want to use the dollar anymore for global trade. They've succeeded with Russia in using RMB and treasury bonds. They're dumping treasury bonds. Uh, they don't want to use the dollar in global trade anymore. It is that simple. They're not Americans. They're not trading with Americans. They don't want to use the dollar when they're not trading with the Americans. And the best example of this is Saudi Arabia. The Chinese want to use RMB payments for Saudi oil purchase. And this is coming. It's part of the problem of escaping from the burning building with threats by the bully outside. The United States is threatening the Saudis. I think they're basically saying, we're going to kill you guys off if you agree to sell oil to China and accept something besides the dollar, like the RMB. This is getting very, very nasty. The United States and its financial function is a gigantic crime organization. And I've got lots and lots of stories where I can back that up at a lower level, like Department of Treasury agents stealing bank accounts. So we just need time to see this play out. Um, it's going to be interesting, and I expect something 
very interesting every two to four weeks. And I have not been disappointed since, uh, you know, the spring months, the last few months. It's been very interesting and exciting. Definitely. And moving now to viewers' questions on cryptocurrencies, this viewer is wanting to know, there are actually two viewers interested in learning your perspective on, because cryptocurrencies are getting so much attention right now and they're growing so fast um what is your perspective on will they leave room for any attention uh for gold and silver in the future well yeah i think the risk with the cryptocurrencies right now is that they don't have a, a very strong backing uh I, I i call them backed by work and air in a sense, they're electronic versions of the dollar. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they've got more legitimacy than the dollar because the Fed and the Wall Street banks and can, can print money. Uh, they, the, the cryptocurrency advocates cannot say, well, you know, we just thought a good idea to give ourselves each a thousand new uh, bitcoins because we're we're insiders it doesn't work that way but the bat so so that's very different for corruption and new creation of coins versus dollars there's no limit to creating dollars there's plenty of limits for creating coins but my concern regarding the cryptos is that they're backed by work and air uh, they're, in a sense, electronic fiat currency. Uh, think of it as a, a pressure valve. Uh, the U.S. government, the Wall Street banks, the Fed, the Rothschild franchise system of central banks, Basel, they just cannot control and stop the movement, flow, creation, and function of the cryptocurrencies. So with the unspeakable Zimbabwe type monetary inflation that we have with the dollar, I mean, QE, they admit, Elijah, to, to 40, 60 billion dollars a month. I think it's more like four to 10 trillion dollars a month when you count the derivatives that they're trying to keep quiet and under control and covered. Uh, and, and redeemed and dissolved and paid off. Currently, they're not even admitting to any printing any money right now. Well, okay, then they're they're going from big fat liars to gigantic liars. I, I keep reading that, that they admit to forty billion a month, and and they talk about reducing it, but they haven't really said that they have stopped. But you no, know, that's that aside. Who cares? They're big fat liars. Uh, and now we've got a, a, a true joke of a non-banker uh, named Jay Powell, who's going to apparently replace Janet Yellen. Uh, and he calls the uh, <laughs> he calls the lack of inflation a true mystery, a, tr a, a, a true mystery. Yeah. Well, so's Reich economics, uh, a true mystery. Uh, not really. It's pretty easy what's going on. Okay, the, uh, is there room for gold? Of course. Um, the cryptocurrencies have a, 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 I don't want to call it a flaw. Let's call it an unmet need and requirement for a more legitimate backing. Okay, they've got a good function. The blockchain is a good structure. There's, there is limit on new creation, but what they're lacking is a foundation, a backing. And you're starting to see here and there, they're, they're, they're oh, I, I don't even wanna mention the names. I, I, I had it in the October hat trick letter, a couple of new uh, crypto coins with, with a gold backing. I'm gonna ignore all the Arab gold backing cryptos because Right now, uh, the Arab world is under siege and is a massive crime center for less than an Arab uh, gold coin is a moron, in my opinion. 
and it's an invitation to lose 100% on that money. They're stealing bank accounts all through uh, the Persian Gulf area with the, the help of uh, the royals, the help of their police, and the help of Western accounting firms. But there are a couple of new crypto coins with a gold backing. And Russia at the Kremlin has made announcements that they're investigating the launch of a gold crypto ruble. So we're getting very close to what I call legitimacy of cryptos. Uh, they've got good function and good structure, but right now they just don't have the foundation. I, I, I had an unanswered question for about three or four months. Okay, well, I understand what Bitcoin can do, but what is Bitcoin and what is its foundation? And I'm told by the smartest guys, electronic work. Well, okay, it's not very deep and it's not very concrete and it's, I think, inadequate to float. I think it's inadequate to replace the dollar in international commerce. I think it's inadequate to replace the dollar for trade payments. It needs a backing. And I think we're going to get some hard asset backing, and it's going to get really interesting. And I think the Bitcoins, okay, I remember having an interview back in August or so, and I, I expressed my misgivings and doubts about Bitcoin, and it, it had a 30% decline after that. So some of my concerns were rather real. I think we're going to have more declines in Bitcoin, and I don't really care about Bitcoin. I care about all the different unique coins, uh, you know, the, the coins that satisfy a certain business function, the coins that provide a platform on which to create small businesses, uh, a coin on which commerce can proceed with business investment, okay, you know, the, the platform, the functional type coins, not the currency type coins. Cryptocurrencies don't interest me much. It's the crypto coins that interest me. And I think the big winners are going to be the functional and platform type coins. The, the voice said to me something, uh, I think it was back right in a, the end of summer, August or so. He said, Jim, the biggest winners in the crypto space are going to be coins that are launched in the next several months, not the ones that are out there now, because although they seem good, they, they've got certain little flaws, they got certain little holes, they got certain inadequacies, they're structurally a little bit deficient. But what comes next in the next several months will be asset-backed coins. And that's where you find your 100 baggers and maybe even a 1,000 bagger. So that's what I'm keeping my eyes on, uh, Elijah. Um, let, let Bitcoin fight the political battles. Let the government try to ban their usage. Uh, Whatever government, I don't care what government, let them obstruct the usage of Bitcoin uh, in cross-border payments to satisfy certain transaction requirements. Uh, let Bitcoin fight the battles. I don't care. I care about the coins, the functional coins and the platform coins. And that's where I think the big winners are going to be. And that's where, interestingly, my smartest crypto friends have most of their investments, not in Bitcoin. They've got a base in Bitcoin. They, they take off profits and they put them in the better coins. The profits are won from Bitcoin and they decline and they put the money in the better coins, what I call the functional and the platform coins. <clears throat> so... It's, uh, you know, it's interesting. It, it's interesting to watch the chipping away 
of the throne for the king dollar. And they can't control cross-border transactions. And I like that because they abuse their control. They're, they're like the ferrymen. I, I'm glad to see that the Russians and the Chinese each have a, a competitor bank transaction system to compete against SWIFT because we've abused SWIFT. Their fees for it that go to the U.S. government for having no participation in any function except watching the money move. I call it the ferryman. And you've got you know, abuse, like, like creating sanctions. And OK, you can't use the SWIFT transaction system because uh, you want to do oil payments outside the dollar. And we don't like that. So we're going to call you a terrorist nation. You can't do that in modern day anymore without consequences. So the Chinese developed their own CIPS to compete against SWIFT. This is getting very interesting, very deep, very powerful in the opposition to the dollar. The dollar's just not going to survive this. Can I, can I talk to you a bit uh, about the what I believe is, is coming up real soon uh, in a, a dual universe system? Elijah, unless you've got something else, we, we can get to my dual universe in a minute, but... Yeah, actually, there is one last question about uh, cryptocurrencies, and then we can get to the dual universe as you're talking about. Um, the question is, do you think cryptocurrencies could be the black swan that, you know, you've talked about for so long? Or do you, or possibly maybe as you're talking about how there could be in the next couple months, new cryptocurrencies announced, could those be or one of those be the black swan? Okay, you're not defining what you mean by black swan. It means different things to different people, but I think I know what you're driving at. Um, the black swan, like like they're waiting for one black swan. Did you miss the last 85? Um, we've had so many black swans that I call them the black swan armada. It's a fleet. We've had so many black swans to indicate that the dollar is facing a sunset, that it's almost become uh, a comedy. Uh, let, me, let me try to answer the question in a different framework. I would conclude that Bitcoin is a very important nail in the dollar coffin. Another big nail in the dollar coffin is the entire table of one belt, one road, Silk World Order, whatever you want to call it, Silk Road, uh, the Chinese initiatives for infrastructure projects. Another nail in the coffin is the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and all the banking functions that will be done outside the dollar, including some Western nations like England, United States, Obama administration was furious when England joined the AIIB. The BRICS Development Bank is yet another big nail in the dollar coffin. I think the BRICS Development Bank is, is it's kind of like an Asian infrastructure investment bank, but for the BRICS nations. But then it overshadow, got overshadowed by the AIIB, and I think the BRICS Development Bank is going to eventually be a processing center to move treasuries and euro bonds and Japanese government bonds to convert to gold. I think it's going to be a conversion process center for accumulating the BRIC Central Bank of Gold. Okay, crypto is just one of many different indications, clear billboard signs that the dollar and the petrodollar system is going away and has outlived its usefulness depending on fraud and war. And the world will not tolerate fraud and war indefinitely. It, it was following not 9-11. It was following Lehman. It was following the 0% rate, Lehman 08, 0% no 09, which I forecasted months in advance. I also forecasted the Lehman event a year in advance. 
and months in advance. Again, loudly. Okay, the, the recent developments are after QE started in 2011, which I also forecasted months in advance. Okay, the developments are the non-dollar platforms, channels, and transaction systems. China's the leader in this. And every single thing China does, they've got Russian cooperation for adoption, approval, and usage. So it's a tag team of the Eastern superpowers. I wouldn't call Bitcoin uh, a, a unique black swan. I would call it the latest black swan in an armada of 85 of them. The Another big black swan is the Aramco Saudi oil stock deal. It's a failure. It's a black swan. It means that the most important U.S. ally in terms of defending the dollar had a financial embarrassment and snafu on the public geopolitical stage. It's a gigantic black swan bigger than Bitcoin. This is, you know, I'm sorry to say that there's not a lot for the update. There's a lot of uh, conjecture and, and speculation and curiosity and and good thought. Uh, like, like, for instance, Hugo Salinas Price, who has some interesting contacts with the Kremlin regarding uh, silver-backed Mexican peso, prices from Mexico. Uh, he was invited to the Kremlin, and th there's a lot of discussions, and I, I think the Kremlin wanted to know a little bit more about, you know, uh, backing the ruble with gold and silver uh, because the Russians are loaded with, with metals. Uh, but Price has a theory, and I asked him about it. He's a subscriber. He's not only a subscriber, but he gave two <laughs> gift subscriptions to friends of his, one a banker in Mexico, another an economist in Mexico, and they continue. And I, I appreciate Price. He's uh, he apologizes. He said, I'm no longer a younger man. I can't get around as much. He, he could not, for instance, make it to the St. Petersburg uh, Economic Conference, I think about a year and a half ago or two years ago, something like that. <clears throat> he had a scheduled talk. No, a year ago. A year ago, September of 17, September of 16. Uh, but Price has a theory, uh, and that is that the Chinese are not going to dishoard, gorge out, uh, hand out or distribute their own Chinese gold uh, for the related oil contracts. They're going to appeal to London to ship out Western gold. Okay, if the West wants to buy Let's say Russian oil. Ooh, they're going to have to use Western gold. Hmm, that's interesting. If the Indonesians, the Indonesians are producers and they're really not in the news much. And I'm very curious how they're going to link in to this Chinese oil gold yuan contract. But anyway, Price believes that the West might supply the gold for the Shanghai gold contract tied to oil. And I don't know. Um, I actually wondered when I made the message, are, are you saying this with tongue in cheek, Hugo? And he said, uh, well, it, it's an idea and uh, it, it's worth thinking about because the Chinese are not about to supply the world with gold that goes and enters the various Western systems and is corrupted and contaminated by our unbelievably diverse, controlled, rigged, corrupt financial platforms. So here's what I think is going to come, and, and relatively soon. But bear in mind, the Chinese have just announced this. They haven't rolled it out. Uh, they're going to roll it out in, in when they're ready. And if we can, if the U.S. continues to threaten them, 
uh, and, and to murder some of the middle-level players and to exact more tension in North Korea, China just might say, well, you know, we'll roll this back a couple months later. But here's what I think is going to happen. I, I think we're going to have a, an evolution uh, with this primary Shanghai oil gold yuan contract. Uh, it links all three. We're going to have an evolution. And I think what's going to come soon is the gold trade note that I've been talking about for four years. The gold trade note is essentially a replacement of the U.S. Treasury bill. The buyer of whatever, whether it's a boatload of grain, like wheat or soybean, corn, uh, a boatload of oil, uh, it could be a boatload of cement, half cement, half lumber. Who knows? Who cares? But the buyer would post a, a petrodollar. This is gigantic importance. So <clears throat> we're going to have to wait for the rollout. Uh, we're going to have to wait for the details. We're going to have to wait for uh, details on gold supply. We're going to have to wait for details on linkage with the London Metal Exchange, linkage with the Hong Kong Metal Exchange. I think we're going to see a, a double-barreled Chinese effort with Shanghai and Hong Kong. It's like two Chinamen. Two legs, one inside China, one sort of outside China, at least a window to the west in Hong Kong. Okay, what, what remains is a number of details and the starting point. What we're not told in the West is all the threats, all the murders, all the fraud, all the gold thefts, all the downed airplanes, all the murdered lawyers that the United States is involved in at the highest levels of our government and financial functions to prevent the Chinese from rolling this out. There's absolutely no cooperation whatsoever, just Al Capone type criminal activity. Uh, we really gotta wait for this to roll out roll out here, Elijah, and uh, I've got a number of questions, and you know, I'm really curious about the, the gold supply. I think China would do very well to say, we'll do 50-50. We'll supply half the gold, but London, you supply half the gold. Let me remind you something that happened in London. This is extremely important. I was told well by The Voice, that because of rehypothecation on an illegal, corrupt basis by London bankers, they used improperly Chinese gold on deposit for creating the entire euro currency system. All the Maastricht rules were violated with the help of Goldman Sachs, and all the metal pledged from London was contaminated by, I shouldn't say contaminated, was infused by a lot of Chinese gold without their permission. The entire euro currency has a fraudulent foundation, therefore. And the Chinese, through the White Dragon representatives and a few agents working for the uh, Interpol Fraud Division and a bunch of highfalutin no, I, no, how should I describe it? High-profile lawyers, they put the London bankers' feet to the fire and extracted 1,000 tons of London gold per month for 30 months. Okay? That's what the white dragon power is all about, extracting 30,000 tons of gold from London between March of 2012 and the end of 2014, and I was told by The Voice when it ended in the last couple months of 2014. Wow, okay. I asked the question, gosh, I didn't know London had that much gold. 
And he said, oh, don't worry, they were pretty much just an agent. The point is that China has the power to extract gold from London with precedent, with an example, and with a historically proved example and event. I asked the question, if London ran out of gold, because they were hitting the bottom of the barrel of the Bank of England, a lot of evidence of the type of bars for that back then, where did all the gold come from? And the boys said, well, real simple, the Vatican and Basel, the Bank for International Settlements. The point is that China has the ability, the means, the precedent, and the channels to extract more gold from London, but I believe they need an accord with the Vatican. They're not going to get a, a margin equity front, and it would be in gold. And it might be like 5%, it might be 3%, I don't know. And the rest would be backed by the gold trade note, the whole gold trade vehicle, the, the, the instrument, the financial instrument that has its marginalized element for leverage up front you know, for easy transaction purposes and creation. But I believe the gold trade note will become a staple of commerce for shipments and payments. It could be container vessels, you know, for staples, my old company. It could be for Walmart, could be for Target, uh, could be for, you know, uh, any number of things, car parts, shipments, giant shipments, the payment for them. I think the gold trade note is going to become a staple and the Eastern nations are going to require it. They're the ones doing a great deal of the production. The United States and the West does a great deal of the consumption and the bond fraud factory activity. So uh, the basis of this gold trade note, I think, will be the, Sh the Shanghai gold oil contract. Now, they made it gold oil for a reason. It's to supplant and make irrelevant and push into the weeds the petrodollar. The most important commercial item out there involved in global trade payment is crude oil. It's a very big portion. I don't know the exact proportion of global trade, but uh, if, if the new vehicle for global trade payments is set up properly in crude oil for that market, the rest of global commerce will follow. That's why they chose oil. It's to supplant and remove and push into the weeds the petrol.